Eric Fry of Investor Place is out with a new stock teaser. He's calling this one, The Revenge of the Heartland, or Made in America 2.0. Fry claims a new, supercluster, of innovation is coming to an unexpected part of the country, and that he knows a bunch of stocks that are going to benefit from this growth. The best part is he left enough clues in the presentation to figure them out, and I reveal all six of them in this video. I'll give you some information on the stocks as well, so you can determine if they're a good investment or not. Let's get started. Real quick, before we get into that, I want to talk about my favorite investing newsletter, which is the Insider Newsletter. I've reviewed over 100 stock picking services, and Insider Newsletter is one of the few that actually beats the market. Overall, it's performed the best for me. The best part is it's only $1 to try, and you get nearly 20 stock recommendations per month. This is way more than any other service. There's a link under this video that will take you to the Insider Newsletter. Click on it and check it out. I already wrote an entire breakdown of this presentation, and we'll use it so we can make this video as fast as possible. Let's go through some frequently asked questions about this teaser, which will answer all your questions. This is also where I'll reveal the stock names. The idea behind Revenge of the Heartland is that capital is starting to pour into the Southeast. This includes Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, Alabama, South Carolina, North Carolina, etc. The reason for this is that automakers have been slowly moving into this region for decades now. And with the EV boom on the horizon, many large automakers are opening up battery plants in these states. The stocks that Eric is pushing are related to the EV industry, and all will have a presence in the states mentioned in the Revenge of the Heartland pitch. Most of the stocks have to do with mining, and from the natural resources, EV batteries need to be developed. There are a couple of stocks that have to do with EV batteries in other ways. So the first batch of stock picks has to do with mining and natural resources. They are Freeport McMoran, Novonix, Syra Resources, and Piedmont Lithium. Here's some information on each company. Freeport McMoran is a large mining company that is the largest copper and gold miner in the world. Copper is needed when making EV batteries, and that's how this company is connected to the electric battery market. This company's stock trades pretty closely with the price of copper. When copper prices fall, the stock falls, and when copper prices go up, the stock goes up. So you're essentially betting on copper prices going higher if you invest in Freeport McMoran. Many people believe copper will be more in demand in the next decade, and this could cause a shortage. This would drive the price of copper up, which would benefit Freeport McMoran. Additionally, they have a small dividend as well. Novonix is the next company pitched by Eric Fry. This is a company that makes synthetic graphite, which is necessary to create lithium-ion batteries. Novonix was apparently linked to Tesla a few years ago, which made the stock go crazy. And many stock pickers were pitching this company furiously. However, the hype from the stock pickers never came to fruition, many such cases. This caused the stock to rise quickly and crash back down to earth quickly. Novonix is a small company that doesn't make a ton of revenue, which is why it trades so low. It has government grants to build new plants and some deals in other places. But this is supposed to impact Novonix's revenue for years. Maybe it gets caught up in a hype train again and sends the stock soaring. If not, don't expect a return on investment for many years. Syra Resources is the next stock being pitched, and it also has to do with graphite. There are very few graphite mining operations in America, and Syra Resources mostly mines out of Mozambique. However, they have a processing plant in Louisiana where they turn the flake graphite into high-grade anodes for batteries. This plant has a deal with Tesla to produce these anodes. Tesla will be buying 70% of their production. Other companies, like Ford and LG, are also interested in their products. However, the plant is not done yet and won't be fully functional until 2025. The next natural resource stock to watch is Piedmont Lithium, and they have a lithium processing plant in Tennessee. This company is a little confusing and has operations in Ghana and past deals with Tesla. Their goal is to supply their Tennessee plant with Spodomene from Ghana. However, reports have come out about their corruption in Ghana, which could have an impact on the grants in America. Lastly, there are two more picks from Eric Fry that have a connection to EV batteries but aren't supplying natural resources. The first is STEM. This is a company that makes battery management software. It's used in the EV charging grids and moves around power when needed. Basically, it stores energy when the price of charging is low, and when the price is high, it returns energy back to the grid. The last stock pick is Lunar Innovations, which makes microsensors using fiber optic technology. These products are used in 5G networks and assist with autonomous driving. This is a small company, and there's some big competition in this space. But people I trust seem to like the moves they've made recently, and they're expected to grow in the future.
So now that we've covered all the stocks, there's one last question to answer. Is the Fry Investment Report worth buying? I did a whole review of this newsletter before and gave it a decent score. I don't think this service is a must-have or anything like that. But Fry seems to have a decent ability to pick stocks. Does he beat the market? Probably not. Most stock pickers don't. However, the newsletter is cheap, and if you can resist the aggressive upsells, it might be worth checking out. Once again, my favorite place to get stock picks is inside a newsletter. You can try this market beating newsletter for just $1 for 30 days and then it's only $35 per month after. Click the link under this video to check it out.